So Kenny Brooks is out at Virginia Tech. We'll talk about his next destination, where he's landed, and maybe the reasons why the change. We also will talk about NC State and Duke, both being teams that have Sweet 16 for men's and women's basketball. And then finally, Hannah Hildalgo. Did she get snubbed for college basketball finalist for player of the year? All of those questions answered on today's episode of Locked on ACC. You are Locked on ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to today's edition of Locked On ACC. I'm your host, Candace Cooper, joined by Kenton Gibbs of Locked On Wolfpack. Each and every day, you can find us wherever you listen to podcasts. Make sure you download, subscribe to the pod from anywhere. Kenton, we've got 2,000 subscribers on our YouTube page. So let's take a moment, hand clap and praise. You know, if we had church bells, tambourine, all the things, we would be shimmy shaking it. And I don't know if we shimmy shake for the Lord, but maybe, 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 maybe. Well, anyway, Daniel danced with all his might, right? I mean, I'm just did. saying, you know. Did he shimmy? Like, you know, who knows? You know, praise knows? Jesus. We have 2,000 subs. We are so excited that you guys organically, one by one, decided to click that subscribe button. And it means a lot because you can listen to just about anything and you can get your information and news anywhere. But you choose us and that just means something special to us. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. FanDuel, make every moment more new customers. Join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started today. And I will say, as a FanDuel user myself, wise of you, to put the money in the basketball on the women's side. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and throw that out there. It's a little buzz for you. They oftentimes try to make the very lopsided, the only lopsided game that went extremely left was that North Carolina, South Carolina game. But other than that, if you watch Iowa for West Virginia, if you watched some other good ones, it certainly was a lot closer than they necessarily predicted. So if you want some easy money, just telling you right now, women's basketball is it. Now, did I have my money on Kenny Brooks not being the Virginia Tech head basketball coach? Sure didn't. That was one of the most okay of today being all the things that has gone on on this Tuesday. That yeah. certainly was not on my bingo card. None of none of what has happened recently is on anybody's bingo card. These are unprecedented times we're living in. But Kenny Brooks leaving Virginia Tech is so interesting because he had built up a team that I honestly and truly I don't think that they hit a ceiling that you would say you can't be better than this in Blacksburg. And also, even if this is their ceiling, were they not Final Four participants last year? And where? Like, did they not come one game short of the national championship last year, or were they in the national championship? They came one game short. Okay. Either way you cut it or slice it, that's still a team that – if that is your bar for like, oh, we came one game short and it didn't work out and, and, you know, I need a team that can reach higher than that, I don't see how. Now, obviously, you and I both know this wasn't about ceiling so much as it is, you know, as as uh, as one twenty one Savage once said, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight M's in my bank account. And we know that's what it's about. But mm-hmm. – it's still disappointing to see the ACC lose such a quality coach. You know, it really is yeah. a moment. You know, I, I'm, I, I can just, I just now I'm getting some range of motion back in my neck, and, and they telling me keep your head on the swivel because these coaches <laughs> are, are hot out the door, and it's really sad to see Kenny Brooks go because the ACC is losing a really good one in them. Yeah, and I think to your point, not only losing someone great for the ACC, but truly an advocate for women's basketball, it hurts, you know, as we are so much uh, homers, as they like to call us, it's just tough because he is such a big advocate for women's basketball, and and he's not running to go coach uh, men's basketball, even though Kentucky might be looking for a new men's basketball coach, neither here nor there. I definitely feel like the money is certainly greener. It had to be in order for you to make that decision. You also look at losing Elizabeth Kitley, potentially losing George A. Moore, which I feel like this makes her decision a little bit easier as she decides whether to go to the draft or whatever her next steps may be or be a graduate transfer. But, you know, just losing that core, doing all that you could for the program, and I had to be some internal things going on for you to decide to take your talents. There's a lot of upside and growth opportunities for Kentucky. You're now in the SEC, which we know with 
with um, LSU, with uh, Georgia, with what's the other team, Tennessee, you have some great teams that you're going to be battling against. And of course you can keep competing and elevating that program, taking it to greener heights. I just, I wish there was an ACC home for him, but we know we have some pretty good staples around here. Yeah. And I, I want to say that, you know, this isn't a, a Kenny Brooks hate train or like he hasn't nah. been an excellent, an excellent ambassador. We're all four people going to get paid the coaches, just like the players. And he did it in an ethical way where the season uh, had come to an end before, you know, he decided to to make his exit. But it it really, I really and truly sit here and say to myself, you know, Kenny, you know, put yourself in a position where you go from a place where you basically got a lifetime contract to where you're going to be in a little bit of a pressure cooker, bro. You're going to be in a little bit of a pressure cooker. So, you know, uh, hopefully Very the fair. grass is greener. But as the As Told by Ginger uh, theme song reminded us, you know, when I took a visit, I was happy I missed it. It was different, but exactly the same. And so, you know, we'll we'll see what it looks like in terms of, of Kenny Brooks. And and more so, more importantly than Kenny Brooks and where he's going, who's going to step up and fill that vacancy? Because mm-hmm. that leaves a huge void of, of kind of, you know, changing of the power dynamics in the ACC. 100%. I think that Virginia Tech is wide open right now. We talk about being one of those staples of recent years. You also have the ACC Player of the Year and Elizabeth Kitley now that she is no longer going to be here. Who sort of comes back in? Maybe it's NC State returning to their throne. Is it North Carolina trying to rebuild? And even though Paulina Paris just decided to leave, which I can go in about that one, but I'm trying to be nice today. As you tell me, I'm usually not about UNC women's basketball. Um, could it be Notre Dame remaining on top and being that dominant force with, you know, not only Hannah Hill Doggo, but Olivia Miles returning. So I think, yeah. you know, it's, it's it's a lot out there. You also have Louisville, which has a great coach and coach Walls. So there's so many, so many moving parts, but we do wish him the best and hope that it all works out for him in the end. Greener pastures, as you say, I wish he would have done it in a Macy Gray voice, but no judgment. You know, we move on and have our ways. So as I mentioned, betting on any basketball is always important, but especially if you want to do it with our friends at FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on your biggest upset or one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200, $200 to use on point spreads, money lines, or more. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and get and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. All right, Ken, so we've got some great basketball that's been happening for the women here of the ACC. Duke picking up a surprising win against Ohio State. NC State getting a victory against a really good Tennessee program. I think they saw that light blue and just really were triggered. Not sure what it was. Notre Dame's in this bad boy, of course. But it's Duke and NC State both ha- both having men's basketball and women's basketball in the Sweet 16. That lets you know not only is it a hoop state you know, for the men, but the women especially, too. Yeah, they're the only Power Five teams to accomplish such a thing, right? And, yeah. and so, you know, it's it's so interesting to see the ways in which, uh, you know, we hear the narratives about the ACC and, and we heard about Duke and Coach Lawson and what they were or were not and how Ohio State, when when that game started to get a little bit out of hand, everybody said, hey, it's over. Ohio State is, is going to stump a mud hole in them. And yet they just kept fighting. They just kept clawing. And, you know, Kara Lawson said something that I think is very interesting. She said, uh, there is no 20-point shot. We had to come back bit by bit, possession by possession. That's what they did uh, in terms of in terms of winning this game. And, you know, NC State was almost on the opposite end of that thing. Because, like you said, they got triggered when they saw that light blue and took themselves a 20-point lead. They got cut all the way down to four. But they still did enough to finish, or I believe it got cut down to two rather, but they did what they need to to finish. And and Isaiah James uh, came up clutch as always and and did what she needed to do there. And so Duke on the men's side, the upstart team, or I'm sorry, the uh, established power in the group that everybody knows about, NC State, the team that just kept battling, kept battling, kept making it happen. And on the women's side, it's almost the exact opposite, except nobody expected NC State's women's basketball to be this good this year. Yet they have. Same thing for Duke. Nobody expected them to be this good this year, especially losing their miss everything. Yeah. And yet 
Mm-hmm. Especially losing their Miss Everything and game. Jay Wilson. And losing Day Wilson. And yet, they still showed up, still did what they did, and, and found a way to get to the Sweet 16. Celeste Taylor decided she was going to go to Ohio State, and then to get knocked out by your team is kind of crazy. Yeah. But I will say, I will say, this has been a long time coming for Carol Lawson, if I can make the argument, right? I mm-hmm. feel like we've been waiting for Carol Lawson's team to sort of get it. There have been, you know, many speculations about, you know, her style and all the things and adjustments coming from, you know, the Boston Celtics down to college, collegiate sports and coaching women and all of that jazz. But I feel like I've been waiting for Carol Lawson to sort of have this spark and just talk about me. You know, she's a great player in her own right, a great great coach and now just to see that team finally sort of get it it's certainly been exciting but i've sort of just been i don't know i've been waiting for this it's kind of like i don't know if it's not expected but maybe with this group we weren't exactly expecting this and, and i can i can get behind that but when you talk about Kara lawson's track record as a coach she's pulled off some of the biggest upsets in, in duke's women's basketball history um, as their head coach she you know a team that that many people didn't see with all due respect right for all that we talk about with Celeste Taylor, who saw her being that good? Yeah. Who said, hey, this is not only going to be a player that's all conference. She's going to be all everything. She's going to dominate in every way imaginable. She's going to lead you in almost every statistical category. Who saw that coming? And yet, under Coach Lawson's tutelage, she ends up being that. And then, like you said, even without her, even with you know your, your arguably your top two players leaving off last year's team, what happens? They're further than they were last year. This is a, a hell of a story. And you know what I mean? There's there's nothing but praise that you can pour on Kara Lawson for the job that she's done with this team. Because, I mean, what, what else could you really ask for in terms of, hey, we need somebody who's going to get our, our program into relevance. When you look at an NC State that's been not just a, a perennial powerhouse in North Carolina, but in the ACC as a whole, and you look at a UNC women's basketball team that seems to be going in that direction, you know, who knows what happens after you lose Kelly, Daisy Kelly and Utsby and company, but, you know, it, it's, it's still to be seen. So it's mm-hmm. it's for her to not only have them relevant, but also in this space, I fix your face. Your face just told on you a little bit, but we ain't going to go there. But we ain't going to go there. This is, you know, a great story for Kara. A hundred percent agree. I think, you know, one thing that I appreciate about Kara is I always leave with a message, right? It's always a sermon, mm-hmm. a testimony, something. Like I always feel better, more inspired, ready to run through the brick wall type energy, just like wanting to be a yeah. better person or really keeping it in perspective. She is a great perspective coach to me. Another great coach who just tells it like it is Wes Moore on that side for NC State. I think, you know, he hasn't necessarily had the horse in the stable from statistically national speaking. I think he has had some very quality girls, whether they've been overlooked is a whole different story. But but for Westmore, like he has a system. You go into NC State knowing you're going to be a part of the Westmore system. And he sort of excelled in that way. And what has made these girls play so inspired, do you think, and really have an opportunity to get into that Elite Eight Final Four conversation? Player development. Player development. Player development. That is all there is to – well, not that is all there is. I mean, obviously, a top 10 recruiting class last year, one of the better recruiting classes in the portal in back-to-back years as well, and another top 10 class coming in next year. Westmore knows how to pick them, but he also knows how to develop them. His players get better from year to year. Look at River Baldwin's offensive game last year against what we're doing this year with her. Look at Mimi Collins' offensive game last year against her shooting percentages and shooting splits this year. She is showing up in a way that that can only happen when you get players who have the right mentality and mindset to develop, but also the coaches are putting you in position to have that success. And, mm-hmm. and you know, the off seasons aren't just wasted because there is no such thing as staying the same. Right. When you are playing at this level, people get paid hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars to do their job. So what does that mean? Their people are scouting you. They have every shot that you took last year logged and charted somewhere. So they know when the ball's in her left hand, this is what she's going to do. When the ball's in her right hand, this way when she catches it here, this is what she's going to do. So if you stay the same player, you get worse. And yet, somehow, all of these players take these massive leaps. And I didn't even talk about the player that probably took the biggest leap in Isaiah James. We have all talked about how talented she is and how special she is and the fact that she was almost like a nuclear reactor in some ways, right? Unlimited potential, unlimited energy. But if you can't contain it, 
Mm, it's going to melt down everything around it. And yet this year, she has found a way to contain that. Wes Moore and her have worked, worked together to kind of contain that and, and you know, push her to uh, the, that next level to where she is that finisher and closer. And, of course, the glue piece in Madison Hayes coming along and being a better player as well. And, and again, her shooting splits getting better. And she's always been – she's played that the woman Jose Alvarado role and that she's just going to defend her tail off on every single possession. How many basketball players you know play with a mouthpiece in 2024? That's yeah, the type many. of that's the type of energy she brings. So Westmore does a good job picking them. He does a good job of developing, but also these players need credit for working on their game and developing, working on their shot and developing, so that not only are they comfortable taking these shots in game time, but they can knock them down. So I think you know both of these schools out the triangle, really all three out the triangle, great stories this year. You know, all for their independent different reasons. And it just so happens to be that these two are the ones that are advancing to the Sweet 16. Yeah, so let's talk about, you know, some of the upcoming games for the women. You know, NC State will face off against Stanford, a newly joined ACC squad. You've got Cameron Brink, who, of course, is one of the top dogs here in the tournament talks. But, you know, they play at 730 on Friday night. I think it's just one of those matchups where – NC State's going to have to give them their best, right? I think you have two really great coaches, two really great, you know, basketball minds coming to a head, and NC State is more than capable of hanging tough with the Cardinals. Yeah, and I think that this game is going to be about whether or not NC State can be consistent and not have those types of lulls where they just struggle to score, where they get a lead and take their foot off the gas. If you do that against this Stanford team, congratulations, Cardinals. Congratulations, our newly welcomed ACC team. You'll be moving forward. Mm -hmm. You'll be going to the Elite Eight. Congratulations. You'll have earned it. Um, but for NC State, that's the biggest thing. Do not let your – start fast. Don't let your foot off the gas. Those are the two things that when NC State does those things effectively, I mean this very genuinely. They had the most, the most ranked wins in the country for a reason. And I'm going to leave it right there because I know they say I talk too much about NC State, but those are two things. Start fast, mash the gas. All right. We love a little rapper. Duke will face off against UConn on Saturday at 8 p.m. And I think this UConn team is slowly starting to come around. They're playing at their highest clip. They're very healthy. Paige Buecher is, you know, talk of the town, all those things. One thing Duke loves is a nice little upset. And it's not impossible for Karen and the girls to get them get it right together. Now, Candace, I got a question for you, okay? I'm listening. Do you know, do you know where this game is going to be played? It's going to be um, in Portland region. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where specifically, but please help the church. Okay. Because I know that UConn generally likes to, or they don't like to, but they find themselves having home court advantages in these here NCAA tournaments. Now, and I'm not just talking about the normal home court advantage, because obviously in the women's game, the top seeds, I believe the top three or four seeds in your bracket, they're going to get those two home games. I'm not talking about that. They, they generally find themselves in a region somewhere around Connecticut, you know, somewhere in Bridgeport or something like that. But I need to hear from there. The reality is very simple. This may be the first time that I ever say this. I think this UConn team is a little underseeded. I think that they've been consistently one of the best teams all year. Okay. This, this Duke team, you got to show up mm -hmm. big time. Big time. The biggest thing that I think they can do is don't let the moment get too big for you. Do not let this moment have you playing out of sorts, have you, you know, trying to do things that trying to play outside yourself. This Connecticut team is beatable, but they're still a very good team. Mm -hmm. They're still a very good team, right? When you think of this team and you talk about uh, Aaliyah Edwards, Paige Beckers and all that, you know, you, you, you've got big names and all that good stuff. So did Ohio State. Mm -hmm. Your goal and your role in winning this one is simple. Be the best you you can be. Do not yep. look for the role of star. Look to star in your role. And this Duke team, let, let it rip. Star your role and let it rip and, and let the chips fall where they may. Because I do believe that this Duke team can beat UConn, but it's going to be a tall order. Yeah, I think Richardson's going to have to have her best game in terms of scoring. I think Tyene is going to have to have her best, you know, assist game in order to get this one out. Yeah. And there's going to have to be some major upsets going 
for Duke to really fly, fly at their highest clip. And then Ashlyn Jackson, of course, she's been a superstar for the Blue Devils. It's just going to be sure. all around playing team ball for the Blue Devils, which is going to ultimately help them get that victory. Now, we want to talk about another team who, of course, you know, they were ACC champions. They have a really good freshman guard, you know, and we're not talking about Juju. Okay, I want to talk about Hannah Hildago and maybe did she get snubbed because a lot of people are thinking so. But first, passion, drive, and patience, what brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, and more LED lights, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. And I leave you with this. You know it's March Madness time. This week's March Madness Bracket is highlighted and brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of our all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys are able to take it to the next level. The NC State Wolfpack, both men and women, are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. The team surprises all with a performance in a powerful performance in their first two games in the tournament. Wins over Texas Tech and Oakland have set them up to play Marquette in the Sweet 16. They say, win, life, go rogue. And that's exactly what the NC State Wolfpack have done here. Take the Nissan Rogue Pathfinder, Nissan Pathfinder or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop at NissanUSA.com. So we end it here with our friends, uh, Kenton Gibbs, who land his plane. Notre Dame faced off against Oregon State at 2.30 on Friday. Good Friday, if you will. Hope you're not working on that one and you're enjoying the sunshine and or some W. WNBA, NCAA women's basketball attorney. And I think that Hannah Hidalgo probably feels a way not about not being college basketball player of the year finalist. Did she get snubbed? Many can make it that argument. Paige. Caitlin, Juju, you know, of the top names, right? I think certainly you make those cases, but did Hannah not get her rightfully deserved nod? No, Hannah wasn't stumped. And here's the thing. I love Coach Ivy, love Hannah's game. And I, I've mm -hmm. always said that if Hannah wasn't born, Zoe, or if she was born a year later or earlier, Zoe Brooks would definitely be the ACC freshman of the year. And, and she's a phenomenal player, phenomenal player on both ends of the floor. With that being said, the players that are up for player of the year, um, I don't know if any of their teams are relevant without them. And not just relevant. I mean, like, I don't know if they're even, like, decent without mm -hmm. them, except Paige. Paige is the only one that doesn't really have that argument because she plays for UConn. But Juju, uh, you know, listen, a little bit of a shot checker supreme. Not going to lie to you, right? She's she's got a little bit of that uh, Deja Kelly in her, that mid range contestant. She loves it. She lo but she can get to the rim. She can knock it down. So you live with that. And Caitlin Clark, she is the woman version of Steph Curry. She's mm -hmm. she's revolutionizing what people are even allowed to do in the women's game on the court. So you, you got to give her her gods for that. So um, all in all, I would say no. And here's the other, here's, here's the beautiful thing about that. Yes, it's a no in that I don't think she was snubbed, as those are the three finalists, correct? Yes, there's one more, but I, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Have okay. Sure. But either way you cut it or slice it, with, with them as the finalists, here's what I know. She has more eligibility left than all of them combined. So she'll have her time. And if she continues to develop and build on what is already a phenomenal game, not only will she be in contention for this, she will win one or two Naismith Players of the Year. Mark my words right now. It's going to bother me, so I'm Googling, because if I don't, then I'm Oh, that's all right. That's all right. But, either, but again, either way you cut or slice it, you're not talking about, you know, a, a few women. break. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. To the and, one. Yeah, and Cameron Brink, I mean, she very much you think so. She, you think she deserves it over Hannah? Here's the thing. I think there's an <laughs> argument there. I think there's an argument. 
I think that, mm-hmm. that Hannah definitely has an argument. But what I would say is that Brink has led that team. And again, she's in that. She's the only one that I say an argument for because she's in, that yeah. page, mm-hmm. she's in that Paige Becker space where she plays with a really good team that even if she didn't exist, they would probably still be a tournament team. But even beyond that, even beyond that, she's not as impactful as a uh, as a Paige Beckers is. So I, I could see the argument for Hannah being in over her. But again, it's this feels like this feels so like you find, honey, you find that a lot good. You find it. You you find it. You find it. Your word good thing. thing. Okay. Here's here's thing. Thing. You don't here's know. Now one thing about you: you don't stutter and you don't go slow. I, and you just going to slow as hell. You, and, you know what? And, and let me let me let me be very honest right now. <laughs> let me be very honest because I tell people all the time, willing to change my opinion when new information is introduced. There's a very much so argument for her over break. I'm not saying this a thousand percent guarantee she was snub. I think that's a little far, but I do think that there was an argument for her over break. So the other three, I, okay. I don't think it's. And you see why the fact that I couldn't even find Cameron, that lets you know but that, that she's forgetting. Listen, so I'm not, listen, not all I'm saying, all I'm saying is you don't you didn't know how to talk at the highest of clips. You know how to let it roll off the tongue. And one thing about you, you don't go slow. And you was trying to find it. And you was fine. But, you took you a long while to get to and, nowhere. Cause baby, I just that, said, like I said, she got snubbed next. And and like and like we talk about with, with John Rothstein and company, right? I don't have confirmation bias. I didn't walk into this saying, Oh, Hidalgo wasn't snubbed. Therefore, there's nothing you could tell me to make me think there's an argument that she was. When I heard Brink name, because the other three, hey, hey, listen, sure. let's stop playing. Sure. sure. But but Brink, there's an argument. There's there's an argument there that she she needs to be a finalist there, so I'll I I understand the snub. I wouldn't go as far as to say this is a guaranteed certified terrible snub, but I I I can see the argument. You, you see me you see me feel me knocking that field. I see the vision. I see the vision. See the vision. Well, they play Oregon State like I said on Friday. I think they have a great opportunity in front of them to get a good dub. I would like I think of all the teams, if it ain't NC State. It's going to be Notre Dame to go the furthest. You know, here's the thing, right? I I think with all the, the, the women that made it and how some of the results have went, a lot of people are like, oh, like how good is the ACC on the women's side? But that means that you're not paying attention to the games because if you are, you will see all of the teams that made these early exits, it's injuries everywhere. Like, it, oh, you lost the, the ACC player of the year and, a player who probably would have been a finalist for Naismith player of the year if she was healthy. Oh, you lost uh, multiple players in terms of your leading scores and rebounders with Louisville. Oh, no. However, did you lose a game in the first round? Come on. Like, you know what I mean? So I, I will say this. I will say this. Now, I love how you didn't find a reason for North Carolina because there's none, but I, I appreciate it. <laughs> in the words, in the words of one uh, Beyonce knows, this ain't Texas. Ain't no hold them. Okay. Ain't no so hold I'm, I'm going to lay them cars down and tell you what it is. Okay. But mm-hmm. with that being said, um, if, if not NC State, I a thousand percent agree that Notre Dame has the clearest path, but I can see multiple ACC teams advancing. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I hope it's all three, honestly, truly. I mean, oh, you, know, absolutely. I'm, you, know how, you know how I'm rocking, but Lord, to I the sword, baby. I'll like, absolutely let's see it. Of course. If we're, if we're going down with the ship, we are going down definitely well, e-funktastic. I'm going to tell you, the, the way that the ACC lawyer is looking, even though Jim Phillips refuses to go in ESPN, they, the, the ship is going to be just fine for at least another five years or so. That, that's All just I'm what saying the is, Jim, I ain't heard you yet. I ain't heard you go on nobody's show yet. And I mean nationally, because locally you're doing what you got to do. They ain't going to hold you. But... All I know is, all I know is, you could have found yourself on the the flagship, right? That hey the now. women have been playing on hey for quite now. some time. I would have been on all the flagship. How- I, I would have been on all the flag. I would have called up get first take. Give me Nick Wright's up. number. Give me exactly. Give me. Give me, give me Skip Bayless's number. I heard they struggling over there with ratings. Give me Jay, that. Give me his number. And whoever give, else, like, come yeah, on. Yeah, give, give me all their numbers. Give me all. Give me Shannon Sharp. Give me Stephen A. Go, come on. Give me, give me Molly. Give me somebody. I, I want to talk. Give me Greeny. Hello. I want to talk. I need to Hello. get some things off my chest. You know, I would have been like Kendrick Lamar. You know, uh, 
Forget the big three, baby. It's just big me. You need to tell Come him, Jimmy on. P. You need to Let's tell see. him, Jimmy P. You know? Sick. Making me sick. Anyway, we got more to go through this week. Hopefully there's no team that leaves the ACC, but you never know. Could get spicy on a Wednesday. We might answer your questions. So if you have some, please drop them in the mailbag. I can't continue because of 2,000 su- 2, subs. It's giving it's giving community, right? It's giving mailbag yeah. questions. You yeah. know, I think we should just th- throw one up there for the group and just figure out, you know, what what are the fans wanting to say? We're going to read some comments. We're going to have a little fun razzle dazzle on tomorrow's episode. So make sure you drop that, leave it for us. But for Candace Cooper and Kenton Gibbs, we are out of here. We hope you have a great rest of your day. Until next time.